We're back on our total boat sport dory again here, and we've accomplished quite a bit. We've got the bottom and the garbage all sandwiched up with a layer of carbon fiber in between two three eighths inch layers, basically, of cedar. And I believe that it's going to be very, very strong and stop the bottom from swelling and contracting. So that's going to be a big thing because dories are subject to getting sand in the seams when they open up. And that's the real enemy of dories on the beach is that they would get sand in the seams. And the sand grinds away as the seams as the boat works and it gives you all kinds of problems. It's hard to get out. So what we tried to do is make it so there is no seam work in the bottom. And I think that's what we've done. So we're pretty happy with that. Today is actually going to be a question and answer video, really, but there's a few things I'd love to show you. We're going to actually cover the bottom again with a Kevlar cloth, and I want to show you a few things about that, and I want to show you a few things about the gain, which is where you plane down the planking to allow the next layer of planking or the next plank to come flush with that plank at the very, very ends of the boat, bow and stern. Here's what we're going to be using for our second layer of cloth to cover the whole bottom, and we're actually going to go right up into that angle where the next layer of planking or the next plank overlaps that plank. Now, this is carbon fiber and Kevlar, and uh, it's very, very unstable as far as moving it like this. So you can go along with a nice sewn edge right along that edge. This is going to eliminate uh, me having to cut it with a pair of scissors or do anything to it. What I'm going to do is put the raw edge that's stitched, and that stitching really holds it together really nicely. So I'm going to start with the stitched edge right on the edge of the boat and resin my way up and probably overlap two layers of cloth in the very center of the boat. So that's what I'm up to next, and uh, it's going to be uh, interesting because it's going to have a very, very different look about it when it's done. The reason for this stuff here is, is that it's very, very abrasive resistant. And what I want to do is have that abrasive resistance on the bottom of the boat so when you drag it on the beach or anything like that, it won't just chew the bo very bottom of the boat all up. Now the next thing I want to show you is up forward here. This is where the planking actually tapers down so it doesn't have quite the same overlap look as it would amidships. And uh, this is what they call the gain. Now, I don't know why they call it the gain. I've never been able to figure it out, but it's just an area, and uh, it's taken uh, a little bit of work to get this accomplished. You have to use a rabbit plane on it, you see. And basically what I've done is I've taken this number 93 Stanley rabbit plane, and I've worked this down until I've got a rabbit in this corner. And what that does is it allows the edge of the next plank to have some girth to it or some meat. You know, I don't want the next plank to taper right down to nothing. The thing would just chip off if it wanted to. So the next plank is going to be about a quarter of an inch thick at the edge, and uh, then it's going to taper up to a half an inch thick. So this is, like I said, uh, it's kind of a tedious situation. And it's a pretty tricky thing to show somebody how to do, but I think what you do in a situation like this, if you're building a boat like this, is you pick up a rabbit plane, something like this, and start working and see what happens, and you come up with the methodology yourself as you go along. Now let me just show you what we've got going on back aft here. This is the transom right here, that nice piece of white oak, quartered white oak, as a matter of fact, and you can see the two layers of garbage plank, and both of them about three-eighths of an inch thick, with the carbon fiber in between. Now, we didn't put the carbon fiber around the corner, but uh, I think what's going to happen is when we cover it with Kevlar, I'll wrap the Kevlar right around there. So the whole uh, stern end of the boat right here up to the first layer or the first garbage plank will be Kevlar covered. We've been sent in quite a few questions, and we're anxious to answer as many of them as we can. It makes me realize how interested and how inquisitive people are about what we do. And I'm just as interested in the questions as uh, the people are to have me answer the questions. So I'm going to get started right away. Uh, we've got a question here that was sent in by Gary Fairbrother. Uh, it says, did you rehearse the procedure in your mind a few times and plot the mixing and curing times, etc., to get it just right? Looked like a great teamwork. Another fascinating video. Thanks a lot. Well, I guess the question is really just about the rehearsal here. And uh, never mind did I rehearse it a few times in my mind. I probably rehearsed it thousands of times in my mind because it was kind of complicated, actually. It's not something that... Uh, everybody's just going to be able to go out and do right away very, very easily. You know, I've been a professional shipwright for many, many years, and it's actually taken a little bit of courage to actually do it this way. So, you know, it's, uh, 
It's something that uh, I, I think that the curing times and all these different things have to be thought about quite a bit. There is something I'd like to say about curing times as far as glue goes. When you do mix glue, don't mix too much that you can't use it right away because what happens is as it stays in the pot, it creates much more heat in the pot than it does when you spread it out. So we don't mix up enough that we can't use it or spread it out as soon as we can. That slows the curing time. When you dry it or when you spread it out, it just slows the curing time and it helps out a lot. But uh, it's something that does take quite a bit of time over the years to get a, a grip on how long it's going to take or what hardener you might want to use, whether it's going to be the slow hardener, the medium or the fast. We used medium speed hardener. It worked out really well for us. Now the next question is here from uh, uh, Traveler. Uh, Lou, what do you estimate the finished weight will be? Well, I can tell you the truth. I've never estimated the finished weight. You know, it's going to be what it's going to be. I would tell you that it might be slightly on the heavy side for a boat this size, especially heavier than a boat, maybe out of quarter inch plywood, maybe a dory out of quarter inch plywood would be lighter than this. But the weight of the boat is no disadvantage at all, as far as I'm concerned. When you're rowing it, uh, it's going to make the boat carry a little bit faster if it's a little bit heavy. I don't think it's going to be so heavy that two guys can't pick it up real easily and carry it up the beach. It is going to have a Kevlar bottom on it and a little skeg back aft if you want to drag it. So we're not too very worried about the weight of the boat. Our next question here is from Paul Fogel. Are you going to, uh, are you going to all this trouble? <laughs> are you going to all this trouble because you have had failures of conventional built dories? Well. I've seen failures with conventional built dories. One of the problems with conventional built dories is it's hard to keep the seam work very tight and sand gets down in the seams, especially when you step from the beach into the boat, you get sand in the boat or even there's sand in the water being all mixed up in the surf and everything else. When it gets in the boat and it goes inside the seams, it pries the boat apart as the boat works and grinds away at the seams and that kind of thing. So I've been wanting to make sure that I build the dory and not have that become a problem. So I've glued it together here at the chine area and uh, I've added some cloth to stop it from swelling and contracting and I think that's going to do the trick. Now our next question here is from George Kayla. Great video. I always love watching your videos. I'm curious what the difference in strength and weight is of carbon fiber versus fiberglass cloth. Well, I can't really give you any figures, but I know that carbon fiber is quite a bit stronger than fiberglass cloth. It's quite a bit lighter. So we've gone that route because of those two factors. It saturates easy, and that's what we were trying to get away with this, get, make it easy to do and make it as light as we could possibly do it and still have it be a, 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 a carbon fiber or a composite construction. Our next question here is from Drew Tooker. Will this dory have an outboard motor well mounted in it, much like some of the Glen L designs, or will it only be sail or oil powered? Well, in the first place, I think it's going to be a completed dory without an outboard motor well or a centerboard trunk and it's going to be just oil powered for the time being and later on we may take it into the shop and alter it in some way by putting a sail rig in it or an outboard motor well into it but uh, at this point we're kind of planning on culminating it when it's uh, able to be rowed. Uh, keep up the great work, I love the series so far. Also are you going to this year's wooden boat show in Mystic, Connecticut? Well, yes, we are going to go to the boat show in Mystic, Connecticut, and we're going to bring this boat with us. So uh, we'd love to have you come and see us right there. Uh, this fellow here would like me to look at a boat that he's been restoring, and I'd love to do that as well. And uh, the next question is from William, Ens William Ensign. What is the working time for the epoxy, and does it have vapors? Well, the working time is very variable. Depends on, like I said before, what hardener you use, how long you leave it in the pot is really what determines the working time. If you can mix it up and get it out of the pot and spread it out, you've got a lot more working time than you would have while it's in the pot. Jared Williams writes, how much epoxy do you reckon you'll use by the time you're done and how do you figure out how much you'd need uh, to begin with? Well, I think after having saturated that first layer of cloth and, and gotten it in between these two layers of wood, I've decided that uh, we've used less than a half a gallon and I believe that one gallon of glue is going to take 
care of the entire project one end to the other. So what I try to do is just get enough glue on the scene here so that we just don't run out. You don't want to run out in the middle of what you're doing. So you have plenty of glue around before you start. We've got another one here from Scott Clark. He writes, great video. Instead of unrolling the carbon fiber and cutting it with scissors, could you have left it on the roll and cut the roll in half on a bandsaw or a chop saw? Well, I would have to say no to that. And I don't think uh, I would be the first one to try that. That's just a great tip from Tips from a Shipwright. Don't be the first one to try it because I think that what would happen would be the teeth on whether it's a bandsaw or a chop saw or a table saw or any other kind of saw would do nothing but grab a hold of the fiber and uh, stop the saw on its tracks. And I just don't think that uh, it'd be safe at all. So I just wouldn't do that and don't be the first one to do it. Let somebody else try that one first. Now I'm going to go right into my next question here from Brian. Hi Lou, how is the lap angle between the planks determined? Well, there's quite a few ways that you might determine that lap angle. You know, it could be that you would have a lot of planks showing maybe three-eighths of an inch or a half an inch. The plank in here is five-eighths of an inch thick, but our lap is only going to show about an eighth of an inch. So what I do is estimate this angle on the, on the garbage plank, and that's cut on the bench rather than cut right on the boat and then I'll pick that angle up with a bevel set and transfer it to the other plank. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. It's tricky to get up underneath and see whether it's tight and it, it requires a little bit of pressure and a little bit of clamping and that is some of the most tedious parts of building a dory is determining and cutting the lap angles. Now, I can't even pronounce this fellow's name but it's Rumel. What kind of conditions will the boat be best in? Light seas, flat calm, uh, heavy beaching, etc. Well, I think it's going to be a fantastic boat for rowing around in nice calm water for sure, but these dories were really designed to be used in quite rough water. You know, they use them in the surf for racing, they use them just to, you know, go rowing in the surf and have a great time. You can use it as a tender to get to your boat in rough water. You know, uh, and you don't need an outboard motor with a boat like this because they cover ground so fast that, uh, you know, it, it's just a nice boat to row and it'll make a great tender or a nice boat for the beach, actually. Now, uh, Gub Wugtug writes, Maybe you've answered this before, but I'm curious about the reasoning for the double planking on the bottom. Well, I have answered it before, but I'd just love to answer it as many times as I've asked, really, because I think it's a distinct advantage in a boat like this. Like I said before, I don't want it opening up at the chines. I don't want it leaking. I don't want the bottom to crack, check, move, swell, contract, or otherwise. And uh, I think this answers all of those questions uh, it wasn't the easiest thing to do in the whole wide world, but I think it was worthwhile, and uh, we were trying to do something different, and I think we've done it. Now, Garrick3475, would you wrap one entire layer over the whole dory and leave some of the carbon fiber exposed for visual look of carbon fiber? Well, we did actually entertain wrapping the whole boat with carbon fiber, or I did, but it's a little tricky wrapping the carbon fiber over the overlaps where the planks overlap each other, and uh, it, would be, it would be something else to be able to get away with that, but I didn't want to try it the first time out. There's going to be some interesting things about the way I put the carbon and Kevlar on the boat, which I'm going to show you later, but uh, so I think that answers that question. Our next question here is from Mr. Welcher. Hi, good job and pleasure to watch. I've noticed that you are in possession of several block planes and they seem to be very handy in day-to-day -day operation. I'd love to hear your opinion on different models. Which one you like the most and how do you set them up uh, for specific uh, kinds of tasks? Uh, take care. Well, yes, I have quite a few block planes on this particular job right here because the curvatures on the boat don't require uh, you to have a long plane like a number five plane or anything like that. And after having used block planes my whole life, I've determined that uh, I kind of like the high angle block planes much more than the low angle block planes. There's no particular block plane, a particular model that I really, really uh, need or want. I can pick up almost any block plane that's high angle and get the same use out of it. But the thing has got to be sharp. You know, uh, if you're talking about setup, 
Uh, the way you set them up is to sharpen them up properly. And I think I've got a, uh, a video on how to sharpen block planes. And, you know, it's, uh, it's something that you, that you have to learn in order to get the proper use out of a block plane. A block plane, normally, you've got it in one hand. And if it's not cutting properly, you get very little use out of it. So it's got to be sharpened up right. I kind of like the high angle block planes. And I'm just going to go on from there to the next question. This one's from Eric Olson. Lou, your videos are great. Well, thanks for that. And I'm uh, really glad you appreciate them. I have a question from the works gif. When you were plugging screw holes with wood plugs, you were using shellac as glue. What's the advantage of this method? Well, you know, there was a time when there wasn't any epoxy glue. So uh, it was always uh, that they would use shellac. Shellac seals up the hole really nicely. You know, it seals up the plug really well. It stops water from getting in. And it does kind of act like a glue. But uh, if you want to pluck that plug out, it would be a little bit easier to get it out than it would be if you epoxied the plugs in. So that's why we do it. It's been something that's been going on for years and years and years using yellow shellac to put plugs in with. So, you know, it's, uh, it's an advantage. Uh, not to put them in dry and if you line the grain up and use shellac it'll work out for you perfectly you know you don't have to mix it you know and all those different things now there's nothing wrong with using epoxy to put plugs in with but uh, you know uh, the uh, the shellac works out really well for us now one more question here John do you have any concerns about the HDMW ribs cracking in the sunlight well, no, I really don't because I don't think they're going to be in the sunlight long enough to really deteriorate. It would take a long, long time. I have no estimate of how long it would take for these to break down in the sunlight, but it would take a long time. You know, I haven't used them in direct sunlight, but I've used it for other things on boats, for slides, for doors and different things. I've never had any problems with it, no matter what I used it for. Uh, it's pretty interesting material. It's incredibly strong and yet flexible. I've used this plastic to frame some very, very large boats. You know, I did the whole bottom of a 60-foot Trumpy power yacht with two-by-two two plastic. And uh, I think it would have been almost impossible for me to have reframed that boat with wood. It would have been awfully difficult. The plastic made it easy. The boat is serviceable today. It's never had any problems whatsoever. I've put quite a bit of it in fishing boats where the uh, frames have been broken in the turns of the bilges. And, uh, you know, I, I've just come to trust it in just about every which way. And uh, I just don't have those concerns. I think that uh, if someone was concerned about uh, the sunlight breaking it down, you can sand it lightly and put a coat of paint over it. And that'll stop it right there in its tracks. So uh, I think it's the material to use in this situation, and it holds a screw something incredible, much, much better than, uh, than oak wood. And uh, with this size frames right here, I'd be more concerned about oak, whether it be red or white oak cracking, than I would be concerned about this plastic. The next thing we're going to be doing in our next video is applying some of the Kevlar over the bottom. It's a Kevlar carbon weave, actually. It's a standard weave. And uh, I've been kicking this around in my head for quite a while. How in the world I was going to get it cut along the edge of the boat it would have been very, very difficult if I did it exactly the same way I put the carbon on. So I've decided to put it on in two pieces with a seam in the middle, kind of an overlap right in the middle of the bottom. But I'm going to start at the very edge of the uh, boat like this, right at the edge of the plank like that because the Kevlar's got a sewn edge on it like this, and it's going to stop it from unraveling or the weave becoming uh, disturbed. So I think that's finally, after thinking about it for I don't know how long, I finally came up with it on the last day here, how I was going to go about it. That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to start at the edge, work my way towards the center, and uh, I can't wait to get involved in that myself. I'm going to stay away from the gains a little bit, actually. I'm going to make it rise uphill and stay away from the gain because I can't figure a way of getting it to go right around those tight, tight corners and stay down tight. So what I'm going to do is start on the edge, work my way in the middle, and if I have a seam down the middle that is an overlap, I could just putty that out a little tiny bit and sand it. But uh, we're trying to work with these materials in a little bit different way than most people would do it. I don't want to sand this material. I don't want to get sawdust or, or, uh, or carbon dust around my shop. 
you know, I don't live with this type of material and uh, I'm happy to use it, but like I said, I've come up with some different methodology and uh, this is the way we're going to go. So I would stay with me because uh, it's going to look pretty interesting actually uh, with this carbon and car uh, uh, Kevlar weave. It actually looks a lot better. It's got this color to it, so it looks a little bit like the color of wood and it's going to look a lot nicer than it would if I used a regular uh, carbon fiber on the bottom. This carbon Kevlar is incredibly uh, abrasive resistant. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So when we drag it on the beach, it won't scar the boat all up or just or rip at the cloth or anything like that. And believe me, it is abrasive resistant. This is the material, and uh, that's our next video right there.